All right. So we're just getting started. We have a few people who are in. Um, we'll get started in just a couple of minutes, but if anybody wants to send through a message in the group chat, say hello, where you're from, um, anything along those lines, I'm happy to chat before we get started, but we'll get started in about three to five minutes, uh, just depending on that. So grab a cup of coffee, um, send out that text message you need to. Today's webinar should run about 15 to 20 minutes, which shouldn't take too long. Um, but I just want to make sure that we have as many people in before we get started. So uh, that'll also give me some time to review my notes and then we'll be good to go. Hey, Jess. We got a good group today. All right, and for those who are joining or have just joined, we're gonna get started in just a couple minutes, waiting for a few more people to join in. Um, if you wanna send through a message with questions, things that you wanna cover, ideas for future webinars, anything like that, just let us know and then we'll, we'll get started in just a couple minutes. It's funny, we usually do the same sort of announcement as an event starting in person. Um, so it's a little bit of familiar experience, uh, but nobody has traffic, so we're not going to wait too long. I mean, maybe someone has traffic. That would be kind of a funny reason to miss a webinar. Okay, I think the first surge of people who showed up on time are in, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. Um, so, without further ado, thanks for joining today's webinar on cleaning up your digital roastery. Um, my name is Devin, I'm the sales manager here at Cropster Inc. in Sacramento. Uh, Cropster has two offices, one's based in Europe and one's based in the United States. And I lead the sales team here at Cropster Inc. Um, focusing on today's agenda, my goal for the day is to help you get the most value out of your Cropster account while working remotely or with re reduced staff. Um, in this webinar, I will help you create a checklist about how to help get organized for now, um, but also for the future and how you can keep your data clean and get the most value out of your Cropster account in regards to profiles. Um, if you happen to this webinar and you're not a Cropster customer, this might be, I'm not going to lay as much of the groundwork as you might want. Um, so if you are a new Cropster user or you haven't used Cropster before, please message me or my coworker. Um, I have a couple coworkers on the call, but Hannes, and we'll set you up with an introductory demo or a trial of the software. Um, and then we'll also do a quick review of how the profiles are used in the application, some best practices, and then open up the webinar for some Q&A. So um, sit back and relax and we'll get started with a quick review of what profiles are and the value that they provide. Um, just another quick note for those who are joining, we'll be sharing a recording of the webinar, so uh, you haven't missed anything yet. Um, if you plan on following me as we go along, um, you might fall behind uh, just because I'll move through some slides instead of going through the interface. So um, just pay attention to what's going on. And then if you have questions, we can go through it in Q&A. But I'm not going to be in the interface. I'm going to be going through slides just to make things as uh, fluid as possible. So. Um, what are profiles? Profiles are the way that you roast your coffee. 
Um, in Cropster, when you do a roast in Roasting Intelligence, our logging software, you'll need to select a profile green inventory in batch size uh, before you start a roast. If a coffee is a pre-roast blend, the blend recipe is contained in the profile. The roast curves that you set in the background are called a reference curve, um, which can be assigned to a profile. So you can't have a reference curve without a profile. Everything you log is stored online in your Caesar account. The profile page, which we're on, so you would just go to Rose Profile, um, includes all of your active profiles as well as your archived profiles, which we'll discuss later. Each profile page, um, so this would just be clicking on a single profile on that profile page, is full of information starting with your reference roast information, so telling you which roast it was. Uh, the cupping score production numbers in terms of volumes, as well as the assigned green components. And we'll go through this in a little bit more detail as we go through it. Beneath that, you'll find your reference roast curve or your reference curve uh, with the option to display different temperatures and readings, adjust your rate of rise calculations, and then also customize the key row statistics that display on this page. So something for you to know is that anytime that you see this customize option on your account, you will have the ability to change what is displayed. And then you can also, um, like when you navigate away and you come back to it, it'll be saved to your user. So if you change the settings on your phone and then you go to pull it up on your laptop, you'll have the same settings that you've been set up. Um, if you have roast goals, you'll also see them on the profile page below your roast chart. On the right-hand side, you'll have some quick uh, goal statistics and then a link that can take you to the full report. Roast profile goals aren't a feature on every account. Um, we recently updated our account types where you could use a roast professional account and it's displayed. If you're on a Cropster account and you started any time before September of last year, um, it really depends on what type of account you have because we were kind of working on creating those packages. Beneath goals, if you cup your coffees, the profile page will have a display of cupping scores for that profile over time, as well as displaying when a reference curve has been changed. So in red, um, that indicates a roast that failed one or more roast goals. Green is a roast that didn't fail any goals. And then we also have the reference um, when the reference curve has been changed on that profile. So this is filtering the last couple months. We can see the cup scores. And this is automatically adjusted to the scale. Um, 79 points to 85 and a half points um, over that point of time. And you'll notice that we're not changing the reference every time we have the highest cup score. And there's um, some QC reasons that you might have behind that. The table below displays a history of reference curves. So every time that you go and you change a reference, you still have this log that tells you every curve that you've had in the background while roasting. And if you have um, cuppings, you can actually see the difference in cupping scores across all of those. Um, you can also toggle and see the latest roast. So that's the review of the profile section, what it is, what's displayed. Um, what I want to take you through is the seven best practices that I've collected for this webinar. So when COVID-19 hit, many of us found ourselves at home trying to find something valuable to do, um, including us at Cropster. Uh, even though many of us have found ourselves busier than ever, we also need to prepare for a new normal. Um, so let's run through those best practices that help us prepare for the future in terms of managing our Cropster data. So to start, we have defining a naming structure. Um, this doesn't just apply to profiles, but we're gonna talk about profiles today. We will have another one about green inventory later. Um, your naming structure needs to be scalable and usable for years to come. So each profile is linked to a roast and the associated roast information and should be linked with a subsequent or like a green coffee um, or a pre-roast blending name. The name of a profile should be clear from the beginning which coffee is in it, what batch size you have, if you have multiple batch sizes for a coffee, so you can have a different profile for each batch size. Um, and then any variants that might impact your roast, like roast degree or ambient temperatures, like if you live in an area um, 
or a roasting environment where on one day it's 90 degrees outside and 90 degrees in your roastery and on another day it could be significantly cooler, that'll impact your roasting. So when it comes to names, we have some recommendations. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my attempt at a coffee meme. Um, coming for you, Matt Perger. But jokes aside, naming is absolutely an, uh, a matter of preference. So your naming structure should be consistent, scalable, time-proof, and easy to reference within your team. Um, it's really hard for me to say what that looks like for your company, but here are some examples. So using that example of the um, Aponte, we have Profile One, Columbia, Columbia Dark, Aponte, Aponte Columbia, Aponte Honey Reserve, and it, the list goes on. Um, some companies require this level of granularity because they may have two, three Columbias at a time with different batch sizes depending on how they run their production. Um, since the profiles field in roasting intelligence doubles as a search bar, I think that it's best to name your profile something you can remember or like how you reference that coffee internally. Just name it that. Um, Based on the, that info and the info that I cover later, I recommend selecting one of these two. It's totally up to you um, to decide what naming structure is best, but it will also depend on how you roast your coffees and how you name your green coffee and cropster. Um, I think for the most part, in terms of having the most granularity of information in cropster, the profile name is not the way to go. Um, it shouldn't be so vague as to name it Columbia, so then you have to create a new profile or adjust the reference groups and lose your historical information when you set, like when you create a new Colombian coffee that comes in, that's going to be roasted differently. But um, you don't need to name it this whole section below because you might just know that it's the Aponte. Like that's, that's as simple as it gets. Um, Step number two, archive your unused profiles. So while inventory management is very tangible, profiles only exist in Cropster, which means that they can often be out of sight and out of mind. Um, I was trying to think of an analogy, but it's an experience that we've all had. Like, actually I had it today and this would be like an analogy. It's like, you go to wash your hands and you're like low on dish, on like hand soap. And then you go and you wash your hands or you go and you just go to a different sink and you do it, but then you don't refill the soap dispenser. I think profiles are very similar to that. Um, maybe I'm just lazy and nobody's going yes in the chat, but that's okay. So um, profiles only exist in Cropster, which means that they can often be out of sight and out of mind. Archiving your profiles is a good way to save your historical data without having to deal with the clutter of profiles you no longer use. Um, in support, we've noticed that if you experience slow loading times while opening roasting intelligence, archiving your unused profiles is a good way to speed things back up. So if you're a person who closes out Cropster and then logs back in, if it's taking a long time, check out how many profiles you have um, with reference groups and all of that. Each time you open the app, Cropster will sync each profile, which if you have a few hundred profiles that have stacked up over the years, um, it can take a while for that page or like changing machines to load. If archiving your profiles hasn't decreased the loading times so much, another way to improve this is to assign profiles to your roast machines. Um, if you have multiple roast machines, you can say, this one goes on my uh, Dietrich IR5, this one goes on my CR24. Um, and then you don't have to search through and go through the naming structure again and say like this one's five kilo, this one's 24, this one is just for the small rooster and this one's for the big rooster. Um, and the naming structure won't matter because Cropster knows to pull that up. So archiving your profiles is pretty easy. Uh, you would use the customize dropdown in the upper right hand corner and you can toggle on the view uh, for archived coffee. So you go to customize, there's a field called archived and you can see it. Right now, I have it filtered to only show archive projects. So the way that you do that is you click on customize and there's a slider that says show archive projects um, in that menu. If you'd like to start a new profile from an existing profile in the future, let's say we have um, this Takese Katawai that we want to get it again next year, but we don't want to 
say it's the same lot. Like it's a different harvest, different coffee, different physical analysis. So what we can do is we can actually click this little copy option and it creates a copy of it with the new reference curve and starting um, weight loss percentage and all of those details without it being the same exact profile, um, which separates it out, which brings us to our next best practice, um, deleting irrelevant profiles. So once you've archived a bunch of profiles, you will find that some, um, some of them you don't need. Like when you do a trial with Cropster, you might name a coffee profile one or dark roast or something where it lacked the granularity or the naming structure of what you have and the data associated with it isn't really relevant anymore. You can delete these profiles with the trash can button that appears after you archive a coffee. So that looks like this little icon right here. Um, you just click on that, it's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna delete this? And that's because deleted coffees can never be recovered. So it's best to delete with caution. Good examples that you might wanna delete would be like duplicate profiles, one-off projects that didn't capture useful data. Um, next would be automating your selections. So automation in coffee, um, when I started, it got a really bad rap. I think it depends on what your experience is, but here's what I mean. So Cropster has a few ways for you to streamline your roast logging by standardizing your profile information. Um, in this case, I recommend assigning your profiles to machines. Um, actually, I'll just go to the next slide. So um, expected weight loss, green inventory, backup inventory, ideal batch size, assigning machine, all of those will speed up the amount of time for you to do batch selection while going through production, but also makes it easier for you to reference because it pulls up in that table. So if you wanna see um, this relevant information about your profiles, you can do it there. Um, all of these options, except for adding a backup inventory, can be done just while creating a profile. And to add a backup inventory, you can go to the profile page and then click the little plus sign under the components section. Um, which you don't have a good way to navigate to that page without going back, but look for the little plus sign. If you need to edit these fields, most can be edited by clicking the little pencil icon, um, which is here. So if you just click on that, you can enter in any of those for your profiles. Cool, that brings us to point number five. Find and replace old green inventories with existing profiles. Um, this is something where it's a carryover from point four. So if you haven't automated your selections or put on green inventories, this next section isn't for you. But if you've set this up and then you've let it fall apart, this is a really good time for you to sit down and update which green inventories are associated with your profiles. So what that looks like is under the profile section, um, it'll get really messy without paying attention. So you'll notice it during your production day, forget about it, and then you'll come back to it on the next roasting day and you're like, okay, wait, um, it's like the hand washing analogy. So on the profiles page in the upper right hand corner, um, you'll see two arrows with replace green in the lot, and then choose the lot that you'd like to replace it with. So if you click, replace green lot, and then I searched Kenya, it would pull up all of my profiles that say Kenya. And then I can say Kenya new, and then it takes that coffee that has zero inventory or negative inventory or one bag left, and it puts on that, that new coffee, um, which is a huge time saver, especially if you have multiple batch sizes for a coffee and you're out of that inventory. Point six, mine your own profiles. Um, this would be like data mining or like getting more information out of it. So this would include check how often you set your reference curves. Um, see if when you set your reference curves, you were happy with it or if you went and you set it again. Uh, identify roast and cup consistency issues. Look for aging in your coffee. Uh, look for issues with ambient temperature data. Uh, we now have the ambient sensor, but we'll go through that a little bit more. Um, and then set new standard roast goals. So most of Cropster's users are small businesses, which means that you are pretty much always too busy. Um, in our experience in specialty coffee, if that means 
uh, anything and we, we've gathered the right information. Consistency and improvement are crucial ingredients in the recipe for success. So you're currently going through the greatest disruption to the coffee industry that any of us have ever faced. And I would just recommend to not let the shakeup of your workforce break you from having quality practices in place or solid quality practices in place. And if you don't already have them in place, this should be the time that you look into setting up solid cupping protocols and quality tracking. Um, and that is like on the same point as the ambient sensor data. So we just released that new feature. Um, it's like 30 bucks a month for you to track all of the temperature data that goes on in your roastery or in your external warehouses. Um, but also in our new packages, like Cropster Cup is included for free. So you have this um, opportunity on your device to log all of your cuppings, but every account already has cupping built into it. That's how important we think your quality data is. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to check in with us, we have a really great staff. We'd be happy to kind of go through like what these exercises are, but we'll also post um, this, these slides later. Um, and then the last point is document and review changes with your team. Um, a lot of teams have gotten smaller. Uh, a lot of things feel busier and a little bit more hectic. We recommend just taking 10 minutes to write down any new standards or changes to your naming that you created as a reference for you um, or anyone who joins your team. Uh, they'll thank you and then you'll also thank your, yourself as well. Um, yeah, so if you go through and you hit these seven points, and I'm realizing I didn't put a slide with all seven points on it, but uh, that'll be my next iteration. Um, I think that you can sit back and you can smile, like knowing that you're prepared to take on profile management in Cropster the way that we've designed it um, based on the feedback that we got from our users. I'd encourage you to take some time to celebrate you and your team's accomplishments that you've had during these times. Um, and then also, like, if you're not feeling confident in these features, please reach out to us and we will help you use these features better. Um, everybody has an account manager uh, and we're very accessible. Um, yeah, so I also want to share some info on an upcoming remote event um, that we've put together in response for COVID. We've done a few things. We've added webinars, we've done ship's beans, but on top of that, we've come up with an event called Roast ID, um, which we're doing with Balzac Brothers and Company. Uh, it was coordinated by Taylor Wallace, one of my coworkers. But Roast ID is a three-week online competition that challenges competitors to identify the correct cupping nodes with the corresponding crops to roast profile um, or roast curve. So except the only issue here is that you don't get to taste the coffee. So competitors will enter an online quiz portal and look at given roast curves and try to match them to the correct cupping forms. Um, you'll need to have an understanding of how changes during the roast influence quality and what those quality differences are scored as. Pardon me as well as describe them on the cupping form. Um, level one, like first competition, like what's the difference when you drop a batch 20 degrees hotter than the previous roast? So this competition isn't just a competition, it's educational, um, it's a good way to learn about roasting um, from roasting experts. And then on top of that, we'll talk about changes in the roast curve and how that influences the taste of coffee. So if you have anyone on your team who would be interested in participating, it's free to participate. It's easy to join and you just have to um, scan, scan this link, you just pull up your camera and pull it up and do that. Um, and this link also has more information on the competition. So we'll be hosting um, each week on Thursdays. So on Wednesdays we do the competition, on Thursdays we do a review. Um, we have a great group of people who are involved, but in order to find out more, just scan this photo. Um, yeah, so then in that live stream, we'll do the Q&A session where we discuss the curves and then the differences in them and the quality impact that that has. Um, yeah, so I just wanna say thanks for joining. Um, I feel like a lot of webinars go really long. This one took about 20 minutes. Um, but what I'd like to do is open it up for Q&A. If anybody has any questions, um, 
please feel free to send those through the chat. If you don't have any questions, that's okay. Thank you so much for coming and taking the time in your day to join us. So yeah, I'm just gonna pull up the Q&A slide and take a sip of water and take a look in the group chat. Yeah, so Raul, Raul, Raul has a question about accessing the backup inventory. So backup inventory has two functions. Um, one would be, I'm gonna have to fly way back, but give me just one second. I think I might have already skipped it. There we go, okay. Um, so this is just an example, um, but we have the first coffee, Los Amigos Natural, and then Brazil. Um, right now, we're going through some shifts in terms of how that functionality works. We know that it doesn't automatically select the coffee for you when you're out. Um, but what it does is it puts it into the little menu at the top. So when you go to click on the green inventory and it shows it has zero, it's the, immediately the next one that shows up. Um, the other thing that you can do is at the end of the work week or whenever you actually have time, you're like, okay, that coffee's gone. You can go into this menu, um, hit edit and remove that coffee that has zero inventory left on. So it just provides a way where you're like, okay, we have a plan. We have a backup coffee for, for this profile. But thank you for the question, Roel. Any other questions? Yeah, I agree. I think it would be great if it was automated. We've had some feedback in the last few months about it, but uh, I'll definitely make sure that goes into our feedback form. Any other questions? All right, well, I just wanna say thanks to everyone who came. If anyone has questions that they didn't get through, um, or they're a little bit more personal to your account type. Um, let me pull up that slide at the very end. My email is devin at You can just send one to me directly after this. Um, but thank you so much for joining the presentation. Really appreciate it and uh, look forward to seeing you at our Roast ID event. So I'm just gonna throw that up um, so that you can see the option. It's gonna be a really cool event. We'll send out more info on our um, Rose newsletter. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, stay safe out there, guys.